Hey, welcome back to Just the Tip Tuesday. If you're here, available watching live, I broadcast um, almost every week, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, occasionally I miss it if I'm out of town, which I will be in two weeks, but um, I try to come here and share a little bit of insight and helpful information. And who knows, maybe even inspiration to help you in your relationship. Uh, so I'm broadcasting live in a private Facebook group that I run. It's free. Uh, you're welcome to join in. You can go to sexwithoutstress.com slash community and get the link. Um, but I do broadcast here rather than general Facebook world uh, to have a little bit more control over, um, well, trolling, I guess, basically. So the theme this last couple of weeks and the next couple of weeks are uh, talking about examining your unique dance around sex. So what do I mean by that? Every couple has ways that they interact around sex, and a lot of it is unspoken. That's why I call it a dance. There's almost a choreography to what's going on. Okay, so uh, we make moves, we read our partner, we, we react to each other. Um, it becomes this, um, I don't want to say game, because it's not childish or playful usually. Uh, there's just sort of this um, interaction we have about how we initiate sex, how we talk about sex, how we actually have sex, you know, what it's like after sex. And there's a lot of utility in examining exactly what you and your partner are doing. Because what I find with clients is when we talk about this in therapy, it's actually really clear that everybody understands what's happening. It just isn't spoken, typically. So when we lay this out, it's clear that I'm reading you and reacting this way, and you're reading me, and you make this move, and then I do that. And it's helpful to just sort of have it all be overt and acknowledged. Uh, because first of all, you can take accountability for your role in this, but it also gives you a chance to do it differently. Uh, and it does expose misunderstandings. Sometimes this stuff's happening and we're, we're misreading a partner or we're mistaking a cue that we're take, uh, getting. And we're giving up on something when that's not what they meant. So getting clear about all this and having these conversations helps expose those things basically expose what you could do differently. So last week's session was about all talking all about how we initiate sex or not, and how those decisions get made, and what happens, and how those bids are accepted or not. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about how you talk about sex with your partner or not. So it's worthwhile to consider um, which of you is more likely to try to bring up sex, if either of you do. You know, how often does that happen? Is that once a year? Is that once a quarter? Is that once a day? Um, who's making that move? Uh, and how are you bringing that up? Is it um, in a moment where you can actually have the conversation or is it like right as you're getting out of the car to go to work? Uh, you know, is it brought up in a positive grounded way or is it brought out only out of anger and resentment when things kind of explode? Um, do both of you bring that up or is it just one person? Uh, so, you know, have some conversation about how that happens in your relationship. And then how is that received? Probably differently if you're being uh, kind and positive versus resentful and angry. <laughs> but, you know, does, does your partner, whoever's receiving that communication, do they acknowledge it? Do they address it? Do they answer? Or maybe do they deflect? You know, it's very common to sort of pretend we don't know what somebody meant or to come up with some sort of distraction or pick a fight potentially to avoid the conversation, you know, so examine well, how does that happen for the two of you, okay? Um, and if it is deflected, exactly how does that happen? And, and you know, one of the things that, that comes out if you have this conversation is how clear both people are about this being a deflection. You know, we don't say, okay, I don't want to talk about this, so I'm not going to. It's like we use this technique to deflect, and we all sort of understand what that means, and we end up doing that, and even if it's not accepted, you know, somebody's able to sort of roadblock. So getting that out in the open and owning your part of that is important. Um, so talk about, you know, whether you're deflecting, whether you're changing the subject, whether you're picking a fight, okay, rather than having that conversation. And then if you do talk about sex at all, are you being honest and direct about what you're thinking and feeling? Are you really sharing what's going on for you? Are you asking your partner to talk about how they feel first and then gauging what you're going to say in response? You know, that's what I call making your partner, partner sort of play their cards before you're willing to play yours. You know, how much are you willing to accept a surface or dismissive answer from your partner 
you know, which is in, in a way, it's a way of colluding with not having the conversation, right? We can tell that we're getting sort of a, a shallow answer to a question and we don't push it, you know, and is that happening because we're, you know, are you afraid to hear what your partner has to say? Are you avoiding saying what you really think or feel because you're afraid of hurting your partner's feelings? Maybe you don't know how to deal with conflict or difficult conversations, you know, so really examine the techniques that you're using uh, to have or not have those conversations. And then, you know, in what way does all this come together to mean that you're, you're maybe keeping the conversation on safe territory, like you're willing to have it to a certain degree, but not willing to dive deep enough into what's going on to really make something happen. That's a, that's a common thing. And, you know, sometimes that's on purpose and other times it's because we just don't know how to get the conversation deeper or we don't know what to do if we go there. You know, I'm afraid to rock the boat because then I'm not going to know how to handle what comes out. I mean, that's that's certainly what I help people with in therapy, right? It's, it, a lot of it's just about creating a container and a space to have those conversations so it can hold everything. I mean, it can get a little bit messy, but hopefully it's not going to totally fall apart with the help of a professional. But you don't always need that. I think setting aside some time to have the conversations uh, where you can be focused and present and not distracted is goes a long way. And then coming from a really positive place, you know, remember you, you want to have this conversation because you want your relationship to be as good as it can possibly be, not because you want to beat each other up. So if you can come from that place, the conversations will go better. So I hope uh, that I've intrigued you, <laughs> interested you in having some of these conversations with your partner and maybe, you know, starting to examine how the two of you dance around some of these issues so that you can be clear about what's going on and consider changing what needs to be changed. Okay, I'm Jessa Zimmerman. I am a sex therapist and a couples counselor in Seattle. And like I said, I try to broadcast live every Tuesday in this group. So I would love to have you join me if you're watching this later somewhere else. I should also mention, if you are interested in my top 10 sex tips, which are not pieces of equipment <laughs> or toys or positions, it's really much more about attitudes that are gonna set you up for success in your relationship you can go to sexwithoutstress.com slash tips, sexwithoutstress.com slash tips, and you can get that free download. And um, if you're cur curious about the website, Sex Without Stress, that's, it's called that because that's the name of the book that I published in August. Again, trying to give you tools that you could use to totally transform your sex life. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.